Hot damn, is it good to see you. I'm John Zadar, and this is Saturday. It's February 12th. Don't forget, folks, we're moving off of this channel over to Stock Wizards. Stock Wizards is the new YouTube channel. I am the Stock Wizard, and I'm going to be bringing you a lot of magical spells. I've got some videos over there right now. We're going to be shuffling everything over there, and some new videos will be going over there soon. Start watching them so I can see the numbers change, so I know you know where I'm at. Knock on my door, will you? And start subscribing. I don't want to lose any of you folks. I've got a lot of things planned with CEO interviews and all sorts of surprises that we're going to be bringing into the picture. So follow me to Stock Wizard. So what do I do here in On Top and Hot? Well, I look at OTC stocks, penny stocks. I go rummaging around looking for things that maybe aren't seen, aren't given enough attention. Then I bring them to you. Now, I found three stocks today that got big things in the works. And all it's going to take is one news press. And they're, they're tipped. They're right there at that point. So these are three stocks you're going to want to add to your watch list because as soon as you see news in the morning, that's going to be the play for the day. I'll show you what I've got. Now, I always do my initial due diligence on this site, the otcmarkets.com website, simply because it's always current. Nothing more frustrating than doing a search and getting old information everywhere you go. Why go through that? Just come over here to the otcmarkets.com website and get it right the first time. The SEC and FINRA update this daily. So we are looking at UCPA. United Communication Partners had a ton of activity today. I think it had over 3,000 trades and a ton of volume. They had news and we're going to get to all of that. She finished the day at 0 0.0138, just under a penny and a half. Still a bargain, folks. 176% gains today. She was one of the top leaders on the OTC board. She is on the pink tier, current has a verified profile and a transfer agent. We like to see these green ticks and they have independent directors. This gives us an indication she has aspirations of at least maybe uplisting to the QB, maybe the NASDAQ. You must have independent directors to uplist. And if you don't plan on uplisting, you don't need them on the payroll. So, so what does this company do? United Communication Partners is a communication agency network. They work with digital advertising over in the Nordic area, Sweden, Denmark. And they must be doing pretty well because news came out yesterday that another company wants to acquire them and did 70% of them and maybe from what I could tell 100% of one of their subsidiaries today, Kronor. So there was lots of attention on this stock today. How much? Let's go check out that volume. Whoa, whoa, 322,000 yesterday. And then today, Friday, she gets 171 million. Folks, I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring that out. That could be like uh, 600 times the volume, 900, I don't know. It's a lot of extra volume. There was a crowd of people around this stock because they see, well, what you see is that this company, as big as they were in their Nordic area, have just been swallowed up by a company that has a much bigger footprint globally. So they're going to have a much bigger footprint to expand their own capabilities. What are their share structure? Something to get excited about? No, no, we got about a half a billion shares right here. The unrestricted shares, that's normally your float, 485. They may tell you the float down here, but normally it's an older date. I don't know why that is. So just go to the unrestricted. That's common shares sold to me and you, the common folk. And her financials. Well, as I said, she has been doing pretty good. Over the last few years, she's been doing 58 million, 66, 49, 39 million. She is falling, no doubt about that. And I know it's millions because they tell us to put those three zeros behind these numbers. Now, if we hit quarterly, you can normally get something more current. So we got September of last year's quarter, three months. They did about $10 million in three months. Now, it cost them a lot, it cost them like eight and a half million of that. So they got to keep about a million dollars but they must be doing something right because somebody just jumped into their game big time. I don't think they have any disclosures. 
we'd be looking for like an 8k and 8k's they do have them here but those are 2012 a material change that's where you'll get news like a merger a reverse merger joint venture acquisition and you'll normally see it there before the news press so that's why I always like to look so speaking of news presses let's see what we got here all right you can see this is all old news 2019 2020 there's one for 2021 and then one for 2022 which came out two days ago let's take a look at that one because it is the news making science continues international expansion with the acquisition of 70 percent of united communication partners the owner of trey krenor media in sweden and denmark uh trey krenor the full service media agency with locations in both sweden and denmark now making science is what it's all about now isn't it because this company has just gotten into their lap and making science is not a public company they're a private company so there's only so much information available on them and I got you just enough so that you know who, who and what they are but they're not small and my my hypothesis here is that these two are going to make a deal and making science could i'm just saying could go public through this ticker it's a possibility it would make sense so making science is a technology and digital marketing consultancy specializing in e-commerce and digital transformation it's just a bigger company like what this company already does but more right its business model responds to the growing need for companies to digitize their entire value chain particularly in the area of marketing the markets in which making science operates are digital advertising data analytics e-commerce and cloud all of them with high growth rates right now the making science group currently employs more than 800 people and has presence in tech technological development in 10 markets Spain Portugal Mexico Colombia France Italy UK Ireland and the USA so it's really all about this company making science now this is their website and I don't want to jump into a lot of it they've got some good information here we're gonna come right back to this in a second but the best thing I thought I could do was just to show you some screenshots here from their own video this first one here shows you their growth from 2016 to 2021 you can see they've been making a lot of acquisitions and these aren't small companies I mean they are relatively speaking but they're not startups they do what they do just like the little company we're looking at and they have been growing in revenues now the last deal they made was with 360 conversion analytics remember that now the next piece of information we got is some of their clients you can see they've got big names in here coca-cola lamborghini l'oreal bmw santander i mean i don't know that's just a small list of some of the people that they're working with they also show us their geographical locations now the little company we're looking at just works over here in the nordic area they aren't you know spread out like that but they are now that's the big deal their footprint has grown immensely and of course there could be that uh more is on the table in silence between these two companies and then we actually get some projections here now remember making science is a private company they don't have to tell us anything about their financials it's none of our business that's why they call it private so whenever they do give us financial information feel privileged they tell us back here in 2017 they were doing 1.1 million euros in 2020 they were at 4.7 million euros now that's leaving out 2021 and 2022 and they said that the market really exploded for them when covid came everybody got locked in all around the world you know all around the world this happened and people ran to the websites for e-commerce and everything else and advertising exploded and they were right there to capture all of that growth so remember I told you to remember 360 all right this is financial information they don't have the dates here but this is the most current one we just looked at today Krenor media you like my my wimpy accent there and here is the last one 360 conversion analytics well they have a lot more between today's and then's real quickly you have they got 100 percent shares of ventis 
51% of Agua 3 Growth, Ad Machina, 100% of Swift Digital, Elliot, which turns out to be a pretty big deal, and then the current stuff, Today Crenor Media. <laughs> So the company is really growing fast and I don't know if any of those other companies that we saw on the list have a ticker. Do they have a ticker? Do they have any way for this company to get out there? And I don't know if this company wants to or not. I haven't read anything like that. It's just speculation. But boy, wouldn't it be nice to get in early on that. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. So we're looking at UCPA, a six month, four hour chart, and we're using TOS for our charting platform. If you don't have a charting platform, you've got to get one. I mean, seriously, you can't actually trade. How can you know when to buy and when to sell if you can't see it? This is free. Just go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for an account. It's free, no money down. You don't even have to trade. Just keep the account open and this will work for you, TOS. So we've got a lot of activity here, but I can't give you any reasons why it's done any of this because they have no news except for today's. Wow. This was a huge jump back here. Now they did have a bunch of shareholder letters that they put out, but one of them did not correlate to this date. I went and checked. So why it jumped, I don't know. And that was three times the price from half a penny to a penny and a half, 200% gains. Whatever the reason, it got it above the 200 and it needed that. It got above the 200 day SMA and it pogo sticked across that for a couple months. But you see how strong it is. Once you get above it, it respects it. Once you're below it, it respects it. So it takes a battle to get over it. And it was really holding on well. And then it lost it, struggled to get a fingertip hold and lost and it fell all the way down here. We hit a low bubble and it looks like she probably touched it again. Probably touched it again and who knows where she was gonna go. She's an okay company, but she has no catalyst and no real appeal, at least not to American investors, right? Until today's news, value is value. Everything blew up. Look at that RSI shooting up into the sky. The MACD ripped through the signal line and is just it too is skybound. The price, new high, and it ripped through every single SMA, including the 200, and far surpassed it. Whew. What goes up must come down? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Let's come in on that five day, five minute. All the rest of the days, you can only see one day here. The rest of the days really don't matter. They were inconsequential, right? This day, not so. This was a great day. We have this huge jump, and again, we are going from a half a penny to about a penny and a half again. So you're tripling your money, 200%. And right there, hit at 10 to 10. That's right, folks, 20 minutes, you tripled your money right there. Now, I've got a rule. I get out of these big runs, well, any big run, but especially the morning runs, before 10, 10.05. Seems the whole market takes a breather, a little coffee break there, and then some people go back to work and some don't. And I don't wait to see which is gonna be. I just take my money and run. A lot of times I will watch, watch the charts and I'll watch these bars to see if they're strong. Other times, I will get out on the rise. It hits 20%. I say, ah, it's rising, 25. And I say, oh, my, my rule is to get out while it's rising. It's at 30% now, it's still rising. But I start to type. I get to my board and I put in my price. It's at 40%. I get my ticker, 50%. By the time I get my order sent, it's 80%. I got the order started at 30 and got 80. Now, the reason I do that is because I don't know where that ceiling is. It's invisible. And looking for that ceiling, well, you sometimes fall off the ledge. And let me tell you, you fall faster than you climb. So you, you, you get to that top. You didn't see that it was the top. And you start to fall. And you say, oh, 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 it is falling. So you get to your keyboard and you start typing. By the time you finish typing and get that order in, well, your 80% is down to 12%. You missed it. So. I like to go up on a rise. Now, this one went up a lot further. I mean, this thing went up, you know, 200% and I'm getting out at 25, 80, 100 maybe, maybe. So I left a lot on the table. But you know what? Not every stock does that. Not every stock runs 200%. And if I can grab that 25 to 80% every single day, just off a small bounce, big bounce, it doesn't matter. 
I'm going cha-ching, 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 and a musical register is a profitable register. So we've got it here at 1010, but that wasn't her high for the day. That was just starting. She then had a second one over here. That one came in at about uh, one o'clock. Then she went and did it again at the back half of the day. Now, I like to take the high of the day right there and the low where it started. The surge started there and ran all the way to there. And I find the center. Now you can take this bottom number, not the bubble, but where the price was at at the close of the day and subtract it from this price, then split it in half. Add that to that bottom number and just come up. I just eyeball it. I get myself a pretty good perspective and right about there. All right, I could be high, I could be low. Why do I do that? This is my gauge for strength. I expect a stock that flew to the moon to fall halfway back to earth, bottom line. And I expect it to hit this. Now, it could go under the water and come back up and globble, globble, globble across the top. That's, that's normal. And if it hangs underneath, that's okay. As long as the price stays here, it's strong. If it stays above that 50%, woohoo, strong, strong, like it is now. Now, if it comes down and it cracks, and it doesn't start to bounce and starts to fall, well, there's very little support here. There's not a lot of steps built up and pillars to hold it. So chances are it's going to come all the way back down. So if you decided to hold here, if it breaks at 50, you better sell here. Get some of your profits because chances are it's just going to drain them away the rest of the day. This took a long time to get back up. That's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That's up there at... Uh, Oh, three o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, this was a lot of frustration waiting for it to come back. Isn't it easier to take a quick gain here when it comes down, draw your 50% line, right? It hit a ceiling here, draw 50%, see if it comes down, then get another buy in here because you know what's going on and ride it up the second time. If it's going to bounce, it's going to bounce up, right? So ride it up. So sell quick, come back in on the low bounce and ride it up a second time. If it breaks through, at least you got your gains before it decided to fall. So this is a great play. It may continue to grow because there's un, unknown factors. How much value is this to this company being swallowed up by another company? How much new revenues are they going to create? And is Making Science going to consider the possibility of going public using UCPA's ticker? Will they do some sort of reverse merger and actually become one? Whoa, that would get this thing running fast. Now we're taking a look at a unique stock. This is ticker CERWF. They finished a day at 30 cents, just under 57% gains. And this is on the OTCQX. That's the top tier, the most transparent. They, it could actually be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange in that regard. All they need to do is get that price up to $3 and they would qualify for the NASDAQ. And they do have their independent directors for uplisting. So they're in good position to do it. They also have their transfer agent and their verified profile. So that all looks really good. Now, Ceres Acquisition Court is a special purpose acquisition company. What that means is a bunch of investors got together and created a hollow shell company. They've got a ticker doing no business. And these shares sell for $10 on the NASDAQ. Most SPACs sell for $10. It may sell for less or more over the time period that they're looking for a deal. Could be $12 or $8, but it's only worth $10 until they make a deal. The price really isn't changed. Now, they have a time limit. 18 months to 24 months, they have to consummate a deal. And the investors really don't have any idea what sort of company it'll be. Now, the SPAC can tell you we're going to be going for high tech or we're going to be going into mining but they cannot target a specific company. So it's really a crapshoot on what company you're going to get. And this company had news last year in February about a deal they made. And boy, did the market explode. It really ran that day and you'll see it on the charts, but things went south. And now they're making a new deal. And that's the news that came out here. But time is running out. And they're asking the shareholders, please give us more time to make this deal. So what sort of relative volume was around this company today? Well, she normally does 2.4 thousand shares. 
Today she did 52,000. Now remember, this is a warrant. This is, I mean, it is a stock, but it's not the company stock. So this doesn't get as much action, but when they hit low bubbles or the company takes a big value leap, all of a sudden the warrants become more valuable. A warrant is a promissory note, a coupon that says in the future, we're gonna let you buy a share of stock really cheap at this price and whatever the price is then it doesn't matter you can buy it cheap sell it and get all that profit right then and there so people like to get warrants cheap especially when the company starts growing and that's what this is really all about how many shares are in the warrants there are six million shares now it doesn't matter if it's a stock or a warrant it's still being bought and sold like a stock so it's all the same six million is a bloody low flow so when the company gets value or this is at a low price that six million when this price starts to move is going to move quick so that is excellent now we've got no financials SPAC there's no business yet and we've got no real disclosures so let's go take a look at that news now the story really starts all the way back here February of last year, as I said, Parallel and Ceresi Acquisition Corp announces business combination, that's called a merge, to create a publicly traded U.S. cannabis well-being company. And boom, that's all it took. The stock just launched on this day, February 22nd of last year. And Parallel is no startup company. No, they're a big multi-million dollar Canadian company operating here in the USA. However, things went south. In September, they mutually agreed to terminate the deal. Now they had a problem. That's what, uh, seven months that have gone by and they're running out of time. And you see here, Ceres Acquisition announces proposed extension to consummate a qualifying transaction. They're starting to beg and we're gonna get a little more information about that in this article. Now this article, Rocket Startup Maritime Launch, set in talks to go public through SPAC Ceres acquisition. Now this isn't a news press. It was an article. It's news that somehow has gotten out. Let's take a look at this. Now this isn't a news press. It's an article. It's on Bloomberg, but it's still, it's kind of like a leak because it did not come from Ceres and it did not come from Maritime. It came from other sources. And I had a hard time finding this. There weren't a lot of places that had this article. And for me, Bloomberg is tough. I've been here so many times that they want to charge me now. I can't see anything on Bloomberg. So I had to actually download a whole nother browser that doesn't have cookies attached to it just so I can see this article for us. See how much I care? So they tell us here that Maritime Launch Services, a Canadian startup that owns a spaceport for commercial rocket launches, is in talks to go public through a merger with the blank check company Ceres Acquisitions Corp. At least according to people with knowledge of the matter. So we're talking about a rumor at this stage, right? It's not solidified, it's not concrete, but buy on the rumor, sell on the news. They say that the merger would give the company a combined valuation of $530 million. That's expanding the value. That's got a lot of people's attention. Now they give us a little information here about Maritime. It was founded in 2016 in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and they plan their first launch in 2023, at least according to their website. Uh, that is gonna be in November. The Nanorax, a Voyager Space Holdings affiliate, will be their first client, and they are planning on launching the Cyclone 4M for technology to put satellites into low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit is a new place for satellites to go a lot closer to the Earth so information moves faster without latency. And I've heard one of the greatest ideas that's already happening. They can put up satellites for $10,000 each, the size of a desk, and they need 35 to 70 of them to cover the whole planet and you can get internet anywhere on the planet, out in the middle of the desert, out in the middle of the ocean, you can get it anywhere and they only wanna charge $7 for it. So that's one of the applications of low earth orbit. They go on to tell us that the SPAC last year struck a deal with cannabis producer Parallel, which ultimately terminated as we just learned. And then they also go on to tell us that earlier this month, Ceres said it is seeking an extension to June 30th from March 
three to consummate a transaction and they're having a shareholder vote on the 23rd so they want a few more months that's how close it is here March 3rd it would be over and they would literally have to give back the money to everybody who bought shares at ten dollars that's right so if you bought it at twelve dollars because I don't know a rumor got out and uh, and the shares started going up it's only worth ten dollars though you bought it for twelve they're only worth ten dollars until they make a deal and consummate it on paper so if they don't consummate a deal by March 30th and they don't get an extension they have to return all that money to the investors hopefully they get this extension to June 30th and hopefully they get this deal with Maritime a launch company now let's go take a look at this warrant so I can show you what this company was really doing this time we're going to start on a one-year one-day chart this is CER WF the warrant for Ceres acquisitions now all the way back here that huge green giant jump humongous was on February 22nd the day they announced their merger with parallel was on the books had not happened just talking about it kicked this stock from about two dollars and fifty cents all the way up to twenty two dollars that is like eight hundred percent gains in one day and look how fast it fell look at the next bar all the way down there that's why I say it's a good idea to sell on the updraft now nobody says you have to sell it all at once you know it starts getting up it gets over a hundred percent sell 25 percent it gets at 200 percent sell another 25 percent you know you can do it that way because then when it does fall out from underneath you you weren't caught holding everything you got some good profits out of it now she did fall very quickly let's come down to that four hour six month view all right she was above her 50 and it looks like she would probably have been above her 200 as well hit a high over here of two dollars and 59 cents in the six month period once she broke the 50 though she broke everything she fell through her 200 I mean look she's even under the 10 and falling hard and then we got the news that the deal was broke between them and parallel boom fell very hard obviously that was a low until it hit this low of 15 cents now remember this started off at like two dollars and fifty cents and we're down to 15 cents here and now we are at 30 cents and this article I don't think this article has been seen by most people folks look this is yesterday we hit a low on the day before Wednesday and she came up a little bit on Thursday and then today she jumped now the price went straight across the top it's you know if I put this on the regular bar I'm using a uh, uh, Heishi hiking bars which show you the pressure so I get to see more than just the price I get to see how much pressure was holding that price up so the thinner it gets the less it's being supported and it could change direction so I like to use these so even though the price stayed the same the pressure was getting less and less on it however my point is that nobody hardly seen that article I think we did get a bump a small bump we're not even up to here yet 33 cents I think this has a lot to show now they have a short window of opportunity here they have to get from March 3rd to June and they have to get that shareholder vote on February 23rd this is a very speculative play as most SPACs are you could get into the SPAC at ten dollars nine ninety eight a share right now and I do believe you would still get a warrant with them you'd get one of these for free you could sell your shares and keep the warrants as long as they consummate a deal everything's good if they don't consummate a deal you get your money back you didn't know that did you yeah if a SPAC does not consummate a deal within the specified time limit all investors get all their money back but you only get ten dollars a share back you may have bought it for eight dollars you're gonna get ten bucks you may have bought it for twelve you're gonna only get ten that's the way they work so this has gone up but it's not going up very fast I think when more people when more news when actually an announcement is made that they're gonna do something with this company I think you might see another jump from 30 cents up to eighteen dollars or something wouldn't you like to be a part of that so that's why I'm showing this to you folks better to be an early on the rumor than late on the news 
And finally, we are looking at ticker PLYN, Palayan Resources. They finished today at 16 cents, just about 19% gains. They're current on the OTC market. They've got all their respectable green ticks over there, so they look good. Now, they are a self-proclaimed shell company. That means they're doing no business. They've got no revenues right now. And everybody knows that. We're just waiting for something to change and it looks like things could be changing. They've put out about five press releases in the last couple of months that say we're looking into it. We've got a company in mind, we're doing due diligence, but they won't tell us who the company is, but they're giving us a little bit here and a little bit there, and I'm gonna share that with you here in just a minute. So what's the relative volume built up around this? Well, it's not too big. Today they did 944,000. They normally do 860,000 shares a day. But it is growing slowly. The steam is building up to the boil. What is their share count? Well, that's not too bad. We got 30 million shares. And considering that, they have 500 million that they could put on the market. They've only got 37 on the market. And the unrestricted shares, which is where we get our float from, is 30 million not bad at all now they've got no financials because well they've got no revenues and the only disclosures they got are saying they have no revenues so the only place we can go now is the news now these are the five press releases that came out the one came out in the middle of december december 15th Palayan Resources signs Memorandum of Understanding. Now, a Memorandum of Understanding is just, it's an agreement to both of us consider the options. It's not a play date. It's not a letter of intent saying we're going to get together and do it. But they're doing their due diligence right now, making sure everything is kosher. And in each one of these news presses, they give us a little bit more information about this mysterious fintech company. And I've gathered it all together. So this is what I came up with. Plan signed an MOU to acquire a global fintech company based in Singapore in the money transfer industry. The company, which is asked not to be identified as of yet, is in the global marketplace. The target company has been in business for 10 years and has developed a robust and scalable global infrastructure network of partners in 62 countries. This is their underpinning for growth. The preliminary valuation of the merger is $80 million, and they project to achieve more than $1 billion in transaction fees by 2023. The fintech operations will become the subsidiaries of Plin. Therefore, they're going to file consolidated statements, meaning all the monies from the mysterious fintech company are Plin's. So their disclosures of financials are going to have that. That's going to give this company a lot of extra value. That's the whole point. This is a fintech company that has developed a robust platform for digital payment, fintech and private lending solutions, including blockchain technology. It is a simple, fast, and secure way of transferring funds globally. They offer the lowest transfer fee and competitive exchange rate without any hidden fees. Everybody likes to hear there's no hidden fees. So, that's what we know. It's a fintech company out of Singapore, been around for 10 years, obviously is doing good business. You don't generate a billion dollars worth of fees unless you're doing business. Now, all we need is that press release to say, we're doing it. It's a done deal. We've signed a letter of intent, even if they haven't closed it yet. The letter of intent will be bigger than the closing. So the next press release is going to have this thing jumping. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Well, that's a wild chart, PLYN's six-month, four-hour view. We can see where the 200's coming from. So obviously, some crazy stuff happened back here, and we're not going to go look because it really doesn't matter. What matters is what happened here. This is that December 15th Memorandum of Understanding press release, the very first one we had, and it was taken to heart. This thing took off on that news. It started down here at six cents, went all the way up to 30 cents. You're talking 500% jump in days, in days. And then it took a giant, giant fall, hit the 20-day SMA, bounced off of it, and climbed going up on that. And there were some huge bounces here. Then it all fell away and it fell down to the 200 SMA, which is where it started. But look where the 200 is now. It's clear up here. 
That's what a big jump does. It's got a little string tied to this. And when you come up that high, you jerk those lines up. So she's in a great position. And look, she's starting those bounces again. You got to watch this stock with that. The MACD is beautiful down here. We had a crossover. It is climbing up and approaching the signal line right now. And the RSI has took a strong jump. Let's come down to the 20-day, one-hour view. All right, there's not a lot to actually be seen except the fall. From the 30 cent, it came down across all the SMAs without any respect, then again started crossing the MSAs, getting on top of them, and was only under the 200. It's fighting the 50, but it needs to get above that 200, and it is stretching for it like a tag team wrestling match right now. It is reaching for it, and you can see that the MACD here has had a drastic directional change. It chose to do something, but look at that volume. That volume is very strong. We haven't had a volume spike like that for 15 days. And the RSI is pushing up hard. Let's come down to the five day, five minute. So we, we're just dribbling downhill here underneath everything. And we hit a low bubble. That shot it above everything. Right above everything. Right to the 200. Laid across it. Did fall under it here until this news came and look at that volume. Everything is pushing up. This is dynamic, folks. Now, I want to come in on that. The end of the day. The end of the day, it was wonderful. We have the RSI. It is just about to go red. It's about to turn into red glowing coals. Overbought is a great zone. This is where everybody is. Bye bye, sell, sell, bye bye. There's a lot of auction action going on now. The MACD has shot across the signal and climbing the mountain. The 10 day SMA crossed every single uh, other SMA just in the last 15 minutes. The price went up, 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 hit a high bubble, pulled back like normal. Hot. Oh, it's not hot. It'll get back to it. So everything looks beautiful here for a morning run on Monday. It is perfectly set up with all that volume. I'm believing there are probably some shares waiting to be bought because people are excited and see hope. They see speculation. They don't have a clue what company it is. But those are some pretty good characteristics we were reading. So this is set up for a good play on Monday. Remember, you can't get in on a market order. You have to get in on a limit order on an OTC stock. So whatever the price is just before the bell, you're going to have to be a few ticks above it. If this is at 16 cents, is it moving in? Yeah, it is moving in less pennies and sub pennies. You may need to be at 16 and a half cents, 16.6 .6 cents, maybe even a little bit higher maybe even a penny because when it runs folks it's going to run fast and you won't be able to catch it but remember get out fast get out as it starts climbing a little bit at a time so that you feel in control of your play so all three companies are basically waiting for the bigger thing to happen i think making science may be a reverse merger potential Nobody said anything, but I get the feeling. And the uh, Ceres acquisitions, if they can get with that launch company, that one's going to launch. And of course, that last one with Plan, who is that mysterious fintech company? Each one of these just need one press release, and they're going to boom, folks. So put all three of those on your watch list. Look for news in the morning as soon as you wake up and see, because that's the one you're going to want to get in on, the one that has news. Remember, folks, DD is the lifeblood to making money. Knowing what you're investing in and knowing when and why is important. The more you know, hot damn, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.